Hey guys, what's up? It's none other than, of course, your girl cooking with Tammy. Tonight I'm going to show you how to make the ultimate, most delicious, moist and juicy garlic butter and herb roast turkey ever. So without further ado, let's introduce these ingredients and get to cooking. First on up, guys, we have butter. For our seasonings, we're going to keep it basic and simple. All we need is salt, ground black pepper, some roasted garlic and herb, chicken bouillon, along with rosemary, sage, fresh thyme, fresh parsley. We're also going to roast some potatoes and carrots along with this recipe. And of course, we have our turkey breast in the cut. And with all of that being said, let's get to cooking. Check it on out. We have our turkey washed, clean, prepped, and ready to go. Now, here's the thing, guys. Because I just recently did a video, uh, let's see, it's my lemon, pepper, garlic, and roasted herb turkey. And I showed how to prep and clean in that video. I'm not going to do it with this one. However, I also have a video that I put out like, let's say about two Thanksgivings ago, and it's called How to Clean a Turkey Video. I'm gonna link those two videos in the description. When it comes to the rosemary, I like to individually pick off the leaves, get all of those flavorful leaves off the stem, simply because the stem is a little more woodier and it's a little harder to cut through when using your knife. When using a knife. So we're gonna get in there and just chop it on up really, really good. We wanna break it down as much as possible because we wanna release all of these delicious aromatics that's locked into these flavorful leaves. All right, that smells awesome, honestly. All right, our rosemary is ready to go. I have my sage right here. I'm not gonna use too much sage because sage is pungent. However, we're gonna get in there. We're gonna chop that on up as well. Gonna leave the stems on this time. I'm just gonna refine it and really small. I can smell the fresh sage already. <laughs> All right, our sage is done. We're just gonna slide it to the side as well. And when it comes to our thyme, I'm not gonna literally take the individual leaves off simply because the thyme leaves are. The stems are really soft, all right? Not to mention the stems have a lot of aromatics locked into it as well. Once your knife is sharp, you should have no problem cutting through the stems. Really good, I'm just gonna slide that to the side as well. We have our fresh parsley ready to go. As you saw, I just removed the stems. I'm gonna discard that. And we're gonna chop our parsley on up. This is flat leaf parsley, however, feel free to use curly parsley, curly Italian parsley, it doesn't really matter. Let's get yourself some parsley and let's break it on down. I'm gonna show you how to make these Thanksgiving recipes, guys, that's really easy, but yet banging with a burst of flavor. It's not gonna require too much time in the kitchen because I know you wanna hang out with family too and not get stuck in the kitchen doing all the cooking. <laughs> anyway, guys, as you can see, we just chopped our parsley on up. Time to move on over to working with our garlic. Now, in order to keep the garlic in place, what I do like to do is to place my knife on top of it and just give it a Hulk smash, so to speak, just like that, flatten it out so it lays flat against the surface and it makes the cutting process a lot easier. Oh, just like that, we're finished, guys. All right, now, for the second step, it's really important, and I emphasize, really important for the butter to be room temperature, simply because we need to be able to fold our herbs and our seasonings into the butter without resistance, all right? We're just gonna scoop this butter into this bowl. And check it on out. Easy, right? Easy does it. Now, this is not gonna be a problem if you store your butter outside of the refrigerator. On maybe like, let's say your countertop or so on and so forth. However, if you do keep your butter in the refrigerator, it's gonna be a problem. So you're gonna have to take it out of the refrigerator at least 15 to 20 minutes prior to working with it, depending on how hard that butter is. As you saw, I just went ahead and added all of my freshly chopped herbs, along with our garlic, and we're just gonna mix it on up and make a delicious compound butter. Once we're done, we're gonna add our roasted garlic and herb seasoning. However, if you don't have that on hand, 
but you do have adobo, you can definitely substitute with that instead. And we're gonna add our salt and pepper. Just gonna add a small pinch, not too much because we don't wanna make it too salty. And just in case you're wondering, this is salted butter. Mix it on up really good. I forgot to pull it, but I'm gonna add a small amount of chicken bouillon for that extra chicken flavor. Just gonna mix it on in really, really good. Once we're done, we're gonna swap our fork for a spoon. We want our turkey to have tons of flavor, so we're not just gonna add our flavorful seasoning to the top of the turkey, no. We're gonna do away with that, all right? We're gonna flip this turkey on over. We're gonna take our fingers and separate the skin. It's so easy to get it done, guys. Make sure, check it on up. See what I'm saying? <laughs> We're gonna create like pockets under the skin. And of course, the skin is already slightly separated because I did wash this turkey breast entirely. I mean, I went in, took the lemon, slid it under the breast, but I'm just showing you this part for purposes if you don't know how to separate the skin from the turkey. That's it. We're done. All right. Let's flip this turkey on over. And we're going to grab a spoonful of our flavorful compound butter. And we're going to place it under the skin. Take our finger and just slide it off of the spoon. I like this method because it's mess free for the time being. I'm not saying that we're not gonna get messy in a minute, but for the time being, it does eliminate a lot of the mess. All right, once we're done, we're gonna take another spoonful of our delicious seasoning and we're gonna spread it all throughout the cavity. The cavity needs some seasonal love as well. <laughs> and of course, this is a bone in turkey. If I did forget to mention, if it's one thing, make sure you pat that turkey dry after rinsing it and washing it and so on and so forth. Simply because it's gonna make the spread a lot easier to spread onto the turkey. Take your hand and just smush that seasoning on out under the breast just like that. And we're covered. <laughs> That's it. Make sure you have some of this butter on every part of this turkey. Flip it on over. Be patient, take your time, it's not a rush, or hopefully it's not a rush. <laughs> but if you want everything to come out perfect, it's all about taking your time and getting it done properly. Take the back of the spoon just spread it onto the breast just like that. Roasted garlic and herb turkey. With a little spin. That roasted garlic and herb along with the chicken bouillon is gonna make a difference from your typical roasted garlic and herb with just your roasted garlic and herbs, <laughs> salt and pepper. It's gonna really amplify the flavors with the other two ingredients that we decided to use. This is looking good so far. Perfect. Get the bottom as well. And I'm gonna make sure we get the sides also. In the meanwhile, we're gonna allow our turkey to sit one out for a couple of minutes simply because I want to incorporate some roasted veggies with this turkey as well. We want to incorporate some carrots and potatoes. So in the meanwhile though, however, that stove or that oven should be on 450 degrees Fahrenheit and preheating and ready for you to stuff this turkey one into the oven. I'm going to show you how to clean these carrots on up just in case you've never done it before because I know for the holiday a lot of people will be cooking for the first time. All right, so we're just going to go with a sharp knife, get that cold water nice and cold. And we're going to take our knife and scrape our carrot in the opposite direction. We're just going to scrape the blades against the carrot 
as you can see the carrot is starting to become nice and clean because we're simply removing the outer layer of the carrot you're going to repeat this process throughout the entire carrot until everything is perfectly one color once you're done you're going to rinse it off in that cold water place it on the chopping block remove the bottom part of it along with the top toss it in the garbage and it's time to cut this carrot on up be sure to slice the carrots up into bite-sized pieces not too big because you want everything to cook around the same time as the turkey slide that to the side and when it comes down to our potatoes make sure you wash them really good because we want to get all of that dirt off the potatoes all right remember they were growing in the ground all right so we need to get in there get a little uh veggie brush and brush those little bad boys under some water and clean the skin really really good we're gonna cut them on up we're not gonna cut them too small because we are gonna be roasting them and the roasting process does take some time to roast this whole turkey so we don't want to cut it too small because if you cut it too small um, it's not gonna be the perfect balance if that makes sense your turkey is gonna be uncooked but your potatoes are gonna be soggy or in this case your veggies so cut them at a decent size, which would allow everything to cook, or should I say completely finish cooking at the same time. And then we're gonna hit it with some olive oil, small drizzle. What's in this bowl, once again, is salt and pepper. And I went ahead and added some additional roasted garlic and herb seasoning. And we're just gonna mix it up really good. If you don't have the roasted garlic and herb seasoning for the potatoes, I wouldn't add adobo plus salt because it would be somewhat salty. But what I would do would be to add salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. That's it. We're gonna add our seasonings. We're gonna mix it on up really, really good. In the meanwhile, I'm gonna place these veggies into my casserole dish alongside my perfectly seasoned turkey. Just gonna slide it back just a bit. We're gonna add our potatoes. It all depends on what you're making, yes, but in a traditional household, if you are making like traditional foods and stuff, the turkey is usually the longest thing to make or the hardest thing to make. And once you get that turkey seasoned, prepped, and ready to be baked on up, everything else should be easy, all right? And what I'm trying to say is basically, I've showed you how to put this delicious, quick and easy roasted garlic and herb turkey recipe together in a matter of minutes okay i think it takes longer to wash the turkey and prep the turkey than to season up the turkey if that makes sense all right that's it that is it we're gonna place it into our oven at 450 degrees fahrenheit guys until the skin is nice and brown however after the skin is brown we're going to reduce the temperature in the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and we're going to allow our turkey to bake on up for, for about an hour and 20 minutes to an hour and 40 minutes. In the meanwhile, I've been basting every 15 to 20 minutes and of course I'm using my turkey injector to do it. Let me just show you how to do it really quickly just in case you've never done it before, right? We're going to remove the needle and we're going to take the syringe, draw all of that liquid on up. Once we're done, one or two things. You know what, let's do this first. We're gonna add some of that beautiful liquid. Allow all of those natural juices to just flow all over the turkey, just like that. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. All right, of course, what we do for the outside, we gotta do for the inside as well. Only difference is we are gonna take our needle and place it back onto the syringe. And we're gonna make sure we keep this meat nice and moist. <laughs> a little bit in every single part of this turkey goes a long way. What you do on one side, you have to do on the other side as well. To assure that our turkey is cooked all the way through, it's really important to invest in a thermometer. The thermometer would definitely tell you whether or not if your turkey is cooked thoroughly, because of course, we don't wanna overcook our turkey because obviously the turkey then becomes dry. And that's where the misconception comes from as far as dry turkey, especially when it comes to turkey breast. In the meanwhile, I'm gonna 
cut into it to show you how beautiful and perfectly cooked this turkey is. Oh my goodness. Check it on out. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. And nice and juicy. Check it on out. See it? This is it right here, guys. This is definitely it. Definitely give this recipe a try. I'm your girl cooking with Tammy. You have options, guys. If you want to rock out with two turkey breasts this year, you can definitely do that. We have the lemon pepper garlic and herb, and we have the garlic and herb turkey, and they're both absolutely tender, juicy, moist, and tasty. They're phenomenal. Give either one a try. Like I said, I'll give them both a try. Not to mention your girl's turkey wings. I'm not going to steer you wrong. As always, guys, I'm your girl cooking with Tammy, and I will definitely catch you in another video. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe button. Talk to you later. Bye, guys.